Hey friends, today we're going to be doing another exciting video tutorial on setting up Thunderbird. Now previously I have a fully public post for everyone, so if you want to learn more about setting up Thunderbird and you like something with screenshots to help you along the way, you can take a look at my three-part series on setting up an anonymous onion mail on Thunderbird. Now of course you don't need an onion mail account for that tutorial and you also don't need an I2P mail account for the tutorial today. You can follow along and use your existing email account and just use this tutorial as a way to help you guide you through setting up your own Thunderbird account. We're going to start out with creating a new dedicated profile for our Thunderbird email account and of course we're going to need to create our I2P mail account if you follow along the I2P mail. There's a lot of benefits to this just as there were with the Onion Mail account that we set up earlier on the blog and I hadn't done a video tutorial on Thunderbird so I figured today is a great day for that. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you'll want to do of course if you're going to follow along on the I2P mail end is to start up your I2P router. Now to do that if you have I2P desktop the package you can download at the Gidea Onion which I'll leave in the blog post which will be fully public. Start your own email account for I2P mail if you're following that. Otherwise skip ahead to the Thunderbird configuration section if you have another type of email account. I2P mail uses the I2P network to store POP3 messages on the Postman HQ mail server. So Postman HQ, it's all in the bookmark. So if you have the I2P desktop, you can simply click down there and go to Postman HQ, creating a mailbox. It'll take you directly to the page where you can uh, create your own new mail account. And of course, I do recommend, you know, everybody needs to follow all the rules. Make sure you read those. Don't use this for any illegal activity, of course. This is a great option for journalists and human rights activists around the world who need a secure way to communicate. But, of course, it's important to mention that your email is only as secure as the weakest link, meaning if you're communicating with someone and they are sending email, if their email is not secure, of course the email communication will not be secure. Unless you use something like PGP, which we'll also be setting up today. So go ahead and create your mailbox, and after you do that, we can go ahead and start our new profile. You can also log into your email another way, right in the I2P router, by clicking on email and right there you'll be able to log in, check your mail, send and receive mail. Let's go ahead and open Thunderbird. Once you open up Thunderbird, and I do really recommend, you know, supporting Thunderbird. It's a great project. It's been around for a long time and they do a lot of great work. So you can always do that if you like. Let's go ahead and get started. So next, what we need to do, no matter where you end up on Thunderbird, you can do this from any window. Go to the burger button, as they call it, with the three lines there. Go down here to help. Then what we're going to do is go to more troubleshooting information. We're going to scroll down till we get to about profiles. And once we get to about profiles, we can go to create a new profile. And this is where we're going to basically compartmentalize our entire setup in an entirely different directory. So that's what a profile will do. So for example, if you're browsing websites on one profile or you're doing whatever type of work you may be doing, a separate profile is like an entirely separate browser. So consider it in that analogy. And then go to next. We will create the name. I suggest something easy like I2P mail. Now I've already created this profile, but you would then click finish and you'll have the profile listed in the same about profiles location. We already have that set up. I wanted to share my own settings to help guide you through this and if you're using another type of account you can also do that so pay attention to these settings right here at the top you'll see server settings we have a pop mail server what the pop mail server does is this is the server that receives the mail and stores the mail now what's nice about this and pop three servers is once you delete them you know we can have leave messages on server or you don't have to and at that point it'll only be stored for you if you delete it. So 
this is a nice benefit there. So unlike some types of webmails where the messages may be stored forever on that server, you have the option here of deleting it on the server. We will use the server 127.0.0.1, a pop server. So when you're in your mail setup, make sure you do that. You can do the manual configuration and you'll end up in this window. Then for the pop server or the receiving mail server, you'll use port 7660. The default is 110 for pop mail servers but we're using 7660. Now for the connection security, we're doing none. And for authentication, password transmitted insecurely. Sounds a little odd, doesn't it? Well, the good thing about this is it utilizes the end-to-end -end encryption in the I2P network, so it actually is being transmitted securely. But in our settings, it doesn't appear so. So if you have another type of mail account that is not an I2P mail account, you'll definitely want to enable whichever security you're able to on that mail server, just for users of that. Now for the SMTP or the send mail transfer protocol server, that's gonna be the server that you use to send mail. You're only going to set this stuff up. You don't need to understand it fully. It's gonna automate the process for you once you have it set up. So you'll be able to send and receive mail without any trouble. So you don't have to understand this, but I thought I'd throw a couple little bits of information in there for you. And at that point, you will also set up a local host because of the way I2P works, it creates a tunnel and a local host port is what you'll be using to access that. So you're actually connecting to yourself through port 7659 to send mail. Now that will route it through the tunnel in the I2P network to the correct mail server. And you're also going to have the password set transmitted insecurely if using I2P mail. If using another server, ensure you enable the proper security settings. Once you have that set up, you can also set up end-to-end -end encryption. We can go to add a key and we can create a new PGP key in order to also add end-to-end -end encryption to our email communications. This is gonna allow you to communicate with others who also have a PGP key. You collect their public key, you share your public key, keep your private key always private, don't share that with anyone. We'll go ahead and create our public and private key pair now. So at this point, I have my mail account set up, Following the settings that I just went over, you should be able to do the same once you've signed up for one. We can then check this. We can add a larger key size for additional security. We can have our key expire, which means that it'll automatically be invalid after three years. Now, this is a security measure you can use to ensure that always have an updated key that is in your full control. Now, after you do that, so I do suggest having your key expire. Now, your key does not expire. That means it'll be good forever. So let's go ahead and generate our PGP key. Hit confirm, may take several minutes as it says. Okay, now we have generated our key. Great, so now we have a PGP key we can use to send end-to-end -end encrypted emails. This means that even if you don't trust a given mail server, you still have that option to send end-to-end -end encrypted emails where you control the full encryption process locally. So it's only between you and the recipient. So unlike other mail setups where you may have a server or a host that has control over the encryption. In this case, you are in full control. You store and handle the encryption on your local machine. Everything is out encrypted, so your content is going to be encrypted before it even reaches the internet. And that's one of the great benefits of PGP with email, along with many other protocols and chat messaging programs. So using things like Omemo and XMPP, things I've covered in previous videos. Now XMPP is a, another type of communication protocol where you can use something like Dino or Gajim, and you can also use Omemo, which is similar to signal encryption. Once setting up your email, whether it's I2P Mail, Onion Mail, or another email provider, I suggest go ahead and 
write yourself a test message just to ensure you set everything up properly. You can also use get messages to ensure that you're able to receive mail and you should see an error if you did anything wrong. And you can go back in the video and check out my server settings and match those with your particular server. If you're using I2P mail, you can simply copy those settings right over, just changing the username. Let's go ahead and write ourselves a test message. And if we receive it, we know we've set everything up properly. You can also set up PGP so you can send end-to-end -end encrypted emails. That can be with I2P mail users and also users on the clearnet with the I2P mail org address which you have both if you have i2p mail and that's one of the great things about i2p is they have a dedicated free email service that not only allows you to communicate with normal email addresses on the clear net but also a more secure way to communicate internally with other i2p user friends so if you're a journalist working on a story you may want to use that internal i2p mail to work with your investigative journalist sources. And we're going to go ahead and send this message. I'm not going to bother with the encryption this time, but check my post if you want to learn how to set up your own PGP keys and get everything set up properly. And at that point, the email has been sent. We should go to our send folder and we can then see the email. The testing message shows up in the sent. I can also go to get messages and I should be able to receive it. And that way we can ensure that we set everything up right. There we go. Our first email has been sent and we have a test message from ourself. Now we're going to go ahead and email a friend that I wanted to test out the PGP with over I2P mail. Now going through the setup for the open PGP, you should be able to do that and then go once you have the email address in, you can go down here, go to encrypt and if it says there's a problem, you can go down here go to your key manager and you can then add their key either from a key server if they have it uploaded or you can import it directly from a file and at that point you'll have their public key in order to send end to end encrypted emails with. So now what we can do is we have our email and we verify the check mark shows it is encrypted it shows the encrypt right here then we can hit send and it should send a end-to-end -end encrypted PGP message to our recipient. Great, so we've just sent our first end-to-end -end encrypted email on I2P mail. It also uses the I2P's end-to-end -end encryption for communication internally in the I2P network. Now, if you use a clearnet address that you're communicating with, the open PGP is a nice added benefit so you still have an option to encrypt those messages as long as the other party also has your public key and PGP set up in Thunderbird and if they don't send them to this tutorial and they should be able to get set up in no time make sure to check out the public blog that's it for today and check out all the free public tutorials there you don't have to sign up or follow but if you do follow I appreciate that if you share these posts and videos really appreciate that helps get the message out there's these types of unique topics aren't always promoted well by the algorithm and it's a big help I also want to thank those who've supported this this month it's a really big help these videos are for everyone because it's something I really believe in a subject Privacy is the only thing out there that can protect all of your other rights. There is no other thing in existence that actually protects all of your rights. That's what I have today, guys. Hope you like this video. Make sure to share it, like, and subscribe. And check out the blog. You can follow for free over there. And there's a ton of posts and over 200 videos. See you in the next video. I'll be back later with more on how to protect your privacy.